We will now look at a more complicated DC analysis, as well as investigate AC and transient simulation. We'll start with modifying the example circuit by deleting the DC voltage source and replacing it with an AC signal source. The AC signal source can have several characteristics. It can be a pulse type signal source, a sinusoidal, an exponential, a piecewise linear, noise, Gaussian, and so on. For this experiment, we'll choose the sinusoidal signal source. We'll choose a DC value of, let's say, 5 volts, which would be used in the DC analysis. We'll keep the AC magnitude at 1. VO, VA, F0, TD, DF, and PH are all used for the transient simulation. VO stands for the offset voltage. VA is the amplitude of the signal, the peak amplitude. F0 is the frequency of the signal, TD stands for time delay, DF is the damping factor, and PH is the phase shift at time 0. For now, let's assume that the signal is at 1 kilohertz, has a 0 volt offset, and a peak magnitude of, let's say, 2 volts. Let's click OK. Let's do a slightly more complicated DC analysis. We'll start with sweeping the signal source. In this case, the signal source is actually V1. Again, we'll sweep it from 0 to 5 volts. This time, though, we will step another variable. We'll choose the value of R2. And we'll choose to sweep it from 500 ohms to 2 kilo ohms with 500 ohm steps. We'll do a linear sweep and we'll choose yes for step it. Click OK. Now go back to DC and click on run. Now we have four different values. The top one, which corresponds to R2 equals 2k, is here. The bottom one corresponds to R2 equals 500 ohms. So as you can see, I'll choose the cursor mode. For the 500 ohm one, the output voltage is essentially one third of the input voltage, which is what we'd expect because R2 over R1 plus R2 is 500 divided by 1500, or one third. We could step the other resistor value. We could choose to sweep R2 in a logarithmic or alternative way, depending upon what component we are changing. As a second simulation, let's look at transient simulation. We have a 1 kilohertz signal. Let's say we want to look at 10 periods. 1 kilohertz is a 1 millisecond period, so let's say we have a 10 millisecond period. Keep in mind that microcap interprets both small m as, and capital M as milli. If you want to use mega 10 to the 6, you need to type meg, meg. The maximum time step by default is 0 seconds. Uh, this means that microcap determines the maximum time step automatically during the simulation. This may result in undesirably large time steps, and we can set this manually. Since 1 millisecond is the period of the signal, I can easily choose say 10 microseconds as my largest time step, and I will hit run. I'll choose the X range and the Y range so it always, and hit run. And there we go, we see a relatively sinusoidal signal. We can improve the uh, signal by decreasing the maximum time step. We will later look into using free analysis to obtain the frequency spectrum of this time domain signal. Finally, let's look at the AC analysis of this circuit. Since we have two resistors, the AC analysis should be relatively straightforward. We'll go from, say, 100 hertz to 100 kilohertz. So just like the other variables, we have to put the last value first and the first value last. We'll plot the decibel value, the magnitude of the output voltage, and the phase of the output voltage. Again, I'll set auto always. If you notice, if I click on X range and Y range and choose auto always, it, it selects auto always for all components. When I click run now, on the top, I have my magnitude value, which is minus 6 dB. 
and down below we have the phase value which is zero degrees which is what we would expect with two resistors.